Good morning. Grace and peace to all gathered for worship here and at home via our live stream. For those of you that are worshiping with us, um, if you have members or guests that have updated contact information, there's a connect card in the pew rack in front of you for those joining us from home. In the event description is a link to an online connect form. We'd love to stay in touch with you. Also, if this service is a blessing for you and you would like to share it with someone else, there is nothing wrong with you taking out your phone finding the live stream on Facebook and sharing it, or for those of you at home, doing the same. We are grateful for the way technology continues to connect us as this pandemic lingers on. As always, I am Pastor Sarah. With me is Pastor Todd. Um, Cantor Tom White is leading our music primarily. We're also delighted to have Neely Ewaldson with us on piano and Pat Ewaldson with us as assisting minister. And as we're able, we stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your, your Son, Son shows, shows us the way, way of service, service and, and in, in him we inherit the riches of your grace. grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and, and the strength to serve the world you have made. made. Through Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord, Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and children are invited to come forward with a mask and sit on a blue square.
Good morning, good morning. How are we doing? Are we awake yet? I am not awake yet. I have our box with us today. This is an old box. It is a well taken care of box and sometimes things that are old and well taken care of have what in them? Do you all know? Message from God. It's a unanimous response. That must be it. Let's see what we have today. It's kind of a heavy message from God. Hmm. Looks like there's lots of things in there. I'm not quite sure what. Should we take a look? This is just a piece of paper. You see what that is? Looks like maybe a welcome mat. We'll put that down there. What's this? A t-shirt. So we have a welcome mat. We have a t-shirt. A bottle of water. And one last thing. What's this? An orange. So I've got an orange water bottle, a t-shirt, and a welcome mat. Hmm, that's lots of messages. I wonder what this could mean. I wonder what this could mean. It's nice to be welcomed, isn't it? When you come to church or when you go over to somebody's house, it's nice to have clothes to wear. And a lot of times I get thirsty and want something to drink. And every day I get hungry and need something to eat. You guys feel the same way? So in our gospel lesson today, we are going to hear Jesus talk about how we are called to care for others. And some of the specific ways he says we're called to care for others is to welcome them. If people don't have something to wear, give them clothes to wear. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. And if they're hungry, give them something to eat. Because this is the stuff that we all need, right? Every day, we all need this stuff. And you don't have to do anything to deserve it just by matter of being alive. These are ways that we care for each other, and there are also ways that God cares for us and calls us to do God's work in the world. And when we do these things, we start to see people the way Jesus does, that we're all beautiful and created to be loved and cared for. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for caring for us and for making us a people who can welcome others. And all God's children said, amen. Thank you, friends. The first reading is from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they've been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. They shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, 
and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 95 responsively. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let, Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your, In your hand, hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, Come, let, let us, us worship, worship and bow down. down. Let, let us kneel before, before the Lord, Lord, our Maker. For the Lord, for the is, Lord our is our God, and, and we are the peoples of God's pasture and, and the sheep of God's hand. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is immeasurable greatness of his power, power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In Matthew's Gospel, we are nearing the end. We could think of this as the sort of the last lecture that Jesus gives with his closest followers with him, immediately following the parables we had last week. And um, just after this, Jesus will go into the night of the Last Supper and then his betrayal. And so he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. 
I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I've got, I've got a confession. I have absolutely no, day, no idea what day it is. Well, I've got to take that back, right? Because I'm standing in the pulpit and there's more than 10 people in the church building. So clearly it's Sunday. But if you were to tell me that this was the 5th of June, it, I, I would be very easily convinced. Earlier this week, I was looking ahead at the calendar and doing some planning for the Wednesday Bible study. And I realized it's almost December and I nearly fell out of my chair. Like, did you guys know that? I did not know that. I was completely caught off guard. When did this happen? And I know like since the middle of March, I've been claiming COVID brain, uh, but it seems to me that there's these details that I just cannot keep straight in my mind. And apparently days and seasons are some of those details. And you know, odd things happen when our world is shifted. Our brains don't work like we're used to. Our emotional reactions can be stronger about things that we used to not really care about or even non-existent about things we used to care about a lot. Days may seem to drag on, and before you know it, months have passed. Does any of this resonate? Yeah, a couple of us, huh? I didn't think I was hanging out in left field by myself, but often I am, so that's fine. I think as a nation and even as a global community, the going is getting tough. We lived through a partial shut down already. Many areas are contemplating doing that again. What does it mean for us? What does it mean for our families, for the holiday season, for the church, or for those who don't have anyone? If somebody could please get out a crystal ball and let the rest of us know, that would be fantastic. Because I don't know where you are, but I am craving security. I long for certainty. I yearn to be able to plan next month and next season and next year. But who knows what's going to be going on. So if you can't fight it, join it. Lean into the mess and the pain and the struggle and the murky fog that makes my brain forget that it really is moving on towards the end of November. One more confession. Since the pandemic started, Todd and I have added a Netflix subscription to our family. It's been a wonderful addition, right? Remember back in the pandemic days of Tiger King? It was a delight. As we have watched different shows and talked about them at the end of the day, one day he remarked that a common thread, no matter what the format of the show, that the worst punishment depicted is isolation. Perhaps that's a student being excluded from the rest of the class, solitary confinement for a prisoner, or isolation for someone stranded on an island. Being alone, being left out, being excluded is the highest form of punishment. We experience it as trauma, we process it like pain, and in our modern day comfortable world, we don't have many tools in our toolbox to process this pain which is what a lot of us are feeling is being isolated and alone. So if we don't have tools to process this pain, we could start by saying, well, gosh, aren't we lucky? Some might even say blessed. Perhaps this experience will enable us to better sympathize with others that find themselves punished by life. Because when I read scripture from one end to the other, there are not too many recurring themes that come up repeatedly but one of them that seems to be a red line running cover to cover is that God made us to be together. God created us to live with other people. He designed us from the inside out to connect with friends and neighbors and strangers and family members and fellow followers of Jesus. Being alone for extended periods of time isn't good for us. It isn't good for our bodies or our minds, our hearts or our souls. So what's a church to do? Today, we celebrate the reign of Christ, 
This is Christ the King Sunday. We remember that when God's kingdom comes in fullness, we will all be together under God's reign. Viruses will be no more. We can go out without fear. We can see people smile all the time, or even if they frown. And until that day comes, we are called to bring kingdom living to our little corner of the world now. We are called to live our lives as though Jesus is already reigning as king because he is. The gospel lesson that we just read pulls the curtain back on what that kingdom looks like just a little bit. And it may not be what we expect. The kingdom just sort of sneaks up on us. Now, the story is very near the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. We could think of it as that last lecture with his first followers. Jesus talks about the Son of Man coming in glory. It's a throwback phrase. He's referring back to the prophecies from Daniel where the Son of Man is the one who will redeem and restore and judge. And that judgment will come against everything, everything that is contradictory to the ways of God. So when Jesus says the Son of Man comes in glory and all the nations will be gathered before him, with all the nations, with all of them gathered, Jesus will begin to separate like a shepherd separates his or her herd at the end of the day. And it seems to me that the marker for the separation is compassion. That makes sense. Jesus' ministry is marked by compassion. So of course, those that follow him will act with compassion. So what's compassion look like? It looks like bringing others out of isolation, out of the things that isolate us. Jesus describes it here as giving the hungry something to eat, giving the thirsty something to drink, welcoming the one who is the stranger, whatever stranger means to us, offering clothing to the one who doesn't have any, taking care of the sick, and visiting those in prison. And y'all, I don't know where you're at, but let me tell you, this might be the first time in my ministry that I read this text and I feel more like the one Jesus is describing as the other who's the one we are called to serve, not the one who's called to go out. It's almost like this, this text is a snapshot of life where we can hold it up right now or at, at any given time and say, where do you find yourself? Are you the one that needs help? Or are you the one that can help? Because we're all there. Before we get too overwhelmed with one more thing we are called to do when we're already exhausted, I want us to get a little grounding. There's a word that we need to dive into. And it's the word in this text that's translated as righteous. We get the righteous ones that come up a couple different times in this long text. That word righteous here is a code word for the church. This word, this work, this serving those in need, this is the work the church is called to do. Not just one of us, not just a small group of us, but all of us, this, this system that we've created, this church, this, this thing, this body. This means that we are called to create and maintain and sustain a system that does these things, that feeds and clothes and shelters and visits. This is our call, not as exhausted individuals, but as a team of believers, a team of compassionate followers, a family. These behaviors naturally follow from a life marked by worship and devotion and sacrificial giving. We begin to see people as Jesus sees them. Every single human deserves to be fed. Every single human deserves to be welcomed. Every single human deserves to be clothed. Every single human deserves to be loved. There's nothing that we do or anyone else can do to earn these basic necessities. We all deserve them, whether that's you or me or anyone else. These are things that pull us out of isolation. These are behaviors that allow us to connect with others. And this is how we're called to behave. And it isn't even that extraordinary. 
it seems to me like in this story, salvation just sort of sneaks up. There's not some big fanfare for our, our righteous king. There's no military procession. There's no parade. Jesus just finds us in the ordinary, eating with one another, picking up a phone to text or call someone, offering food to those who are hungry, making our homes and our churches a place of welcome, spending time with the lonely. It's in these moments that we are assured that Christ doesn't just join us here in the place where he promises to be, but Christ our King joins us in times of suffering and walks with us. To close, I want to share a story from a friend of mine. Several years ago, you know, you, you go out on Saturday nights and inevitably people that know you're a pastor say, well, well what, what are you preaching on tomorrow? And I said, oh, it's, it's terrible scripture. It's the one about Jesus separate, separating the, the sheep and the goats and, and finding, you know, finding him in, in the least. And, and, you know, I just never know what to say. And he goes, gosh, I, I keep that parable in front of me all the time. I said, really? That's typically not the response you get when someone asks you what you're preaching on the next day. He said, yeah, let me explain. He's, um, this friend of mine is an, is an eye doctor and he said, yeah, I always try to keep in front of me how you care for the least of these is how you care for Jesus because a lot of times I get prisoners sent to my practice. I said, really? He said, yeah, and it's really upsetting because they sit in the waiting room and they have a guard with them who's armed and they're always shackled and they have to kind of shuffle as they come in. And usually by the time they get to me, it's because the, the doctor at the prison couldn't take care of them anymore and the pressures in their eyes are really high and there's usually something very complicated going on. And I'm always anxious because then I've got a guy with a gun standing at the door with <laughs> whatever I do. And he said, but for me, this is my opportunity to reach out to the least. This is my opportunity to treat people with dignity where other people may not treat them with dignity and know that they're here, they come to me for care, and that's what I can offer them. And so I treat them as though I'm treating Jesus in my office. What a great story. When we are isolated, when we feel like the world is closing in on us, it's then that Jesus offers us what we deserve. But really, it's more than what we deserve. Because when Jesus shows up and when Jesus cares for us and for others, he offers us hope that there's a better way. He gives us that extension of love and forgiveness that comes with the promise of eternal life, where we are all joined together, all nations, whole and complete. And until that time comes, long live the King. Amen.
we have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation came down from him by the birth. Mary. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We'll have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions in our nation and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from sy systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all those in our community who are ill in body or mind, especially Pam, Ron, Hazel, Butch, Al, Jim, Joe, Kathy, Mike, Jay, Susan, Gina, Chris, June, Marvin, Berlin, Nanette, KV, Ray, and those we name in silence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
This is the point in our service where we would normally collect an offering. We still are not passing the plates uh, to help minimize risks. However, there's a basket at the back where you can leave your offering, or if you have your statement of intent for our annual appeal, you can leave that there as well. We continue to appreciate your generosity as we move forward with mission and ministry. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, surrounded by evil and bordered by death, we appeal to you, our sovereign, our wisdom, and our judge. We praise you for Christ who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Come, Lord Jesus. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and make us bold to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue to attempt to distribute wine as safely as possible. One of the things you can do is you receive the small cup, as I learned when I took First Communion classes in 1986. Make a little U with your thumb and your first finger, and I'll be able to set the cup right there in the middle of it, which will help prevent any contact with my hands. Come and eat. Come and receive God's goodness and grace.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king no more crying there we going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.